Welcome to AEAPD Online Live. Today I am here with Lincoln Hughes from EverFi to tell us about their products that schools can use. So welcome, Lincoln. Thanks for having me, Rob. Um, so uh, tell us about EverFi. What is EverFi? So EverFi is a critical skills company. So what we do is we build online learning courses and then we give them to schools for free um, due to private and statewide sponsorships. So we'll go into the details in a little bit, um, but some of the big numbers out there is that we've had a little, a little over 6,000 schools nationwide use our courses. Um, we have close to 1,000 private and state sponsors paying for the courses. Um, and as of the first of the month, we've had over 7.5 million students um, go through our courses. So that could be anyone from, you know, sixth grader in Fort Madison to a, um, a freshman at Harvard. So we have courses both in the middle school, high school, and college level. Um, we also dabble in adult education as well. Um, so um, our funding, kind of our story is related to how we fund and how we're guided. And um, three big names in technologies are some of our our uh, major advisors, and that's Jeff Bezos out of Amazon.com, uh, CEO there, former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, and then the co-founder of Twitter, Evan Williams, um, had provided some of the startup money for our company to scale up uh, nationwide and provide guidance in terms of what directions we're going and what sort of courses uh, we're developing. What are some of the ways that it helps schools? What are some of the yeah. things that it provides? So it provides, um, you know, a lot of direct blended learning resources um, to supplement the great instruction going on in schools. So um, we can we address, like we said before, critical needs. So things like, you know, alcohol abuse, sexual assault prevention, um, dropouts, um, financial literacy. So all the all the different statistics we see, you know, the newspaper all the time, the statistics you're seeing um, on the screen right now are some of the issues we go after and we build courses um, trying to attack those issues. Okay. So um, it looks like from the screen here that there's a lot of places that are using it. Um, how many places in Iowa are currently trying great, out great the MFI products? Yeah, so um, as of this morning, I think it was 187 Iowa high schools um, have used our financial literacy course. Um, so that's, you know, 65% of Iowa high schools have used this free um, resource. And, you know, hopefully as we grow, you know, we've been in Iowa for only a couple of years now. As we grow, we'll see that number um, getting closer to 100% of the schools in Iowa. So it looks like you have people all over the country supporting this as well. It's not just an Iowa available thing. Yeah. So our headquarters technically are, is, in, is in Washington, D.C. Um, but what we've learned and what we, what we really believe in is that education um, decisions are made on a local level. So there's about 130 people like myself um, living in the communities they serve, um, you know, anywhere from San Francisco all the way up to Maine, um, to Minneapolis, Des Moines, Austin, Texas. So anywhere in the state really um, where there's a need for these courses, we have a person um, supporting those teachers and those school districts. Okay. So um, how does how does EverFi work? What what how do people start to access it and yeah. use it with their students? Sure. So it's a web-based course. So the only thing really in the world I value is a registration code um, that I give to the teacher or the guidance counselor or the community member that wants to use the course and has a has a need for it. And then they use that registration code to log into the course, set up their class, and then the student is permitted to log into that class. So you know, Mr. Rob is a teacher in Des Moines. Um, I'll help him get set up on his class, and then he can give his registration code to his students so they can um, access the course. So when they access the course, what kinds of things will they find in the course? Yeah, so it depends on the course what exactly they'll find. But um, some features that are across all of our courses are instructional animation, gamification, uh, digital badges, and online assessments. So instructional animation, the student's not passively sitting there watching a video on, you know, the dangers of alcohol or what it does to the brain, but they're actually interacting with the material as they acquire new information. Uh, the gamification piece of it um, is kind of similar where the students aren't passively watching, they're dragging and dropping, they're interacting with the material. Um, they might be interviewing someone from the Underground Railroad in our African American history course. Um, so it's a lot of gamification, really engaging because you know, we try to make our courses as rigorous as possible, and the the ceiling on rigor is engagement, as many teachers know. Um, so, you know, we try to make it as 
engaging as possible so we can make it as difficult as possible. And so digital badging is something that's been in education for years. You know, my grandma used it by putting a gold star on your, on your shirt. Um, and the Boy Scouts of America use it. You know, video games use it all the time now. Um, and so it's not a new idea, but we use it um, to kind of provide incentive for the student as they're going through the courses. And then online assessment, my favorite piece as a former teacher. Um, I didn't really like writing assessments, grading them, administrating them, and, and all the above. And so what we do is periodically throughout the course, students are assessed on the knowledge they should be gaining. And so you can see the progress of each of your students as they're going through the course. Okay, so um, it looks like there's lots of data that's collected. What kinds of things are collected on the products that you have? Yeah, so there's, a, there's two features that go through all of our courses, a pre and post survey and then content quizzes throughout it. So the pre and post survey are going to measure the changes in attitudes and beliefs of your student towards whatever we're, whatever we're attacking. So, uh, for example, the financial literacy course is a question out there about um, credit cards. Like, how comfortable are you talking to an adult about credit cards? You know, one, not comfortable at all. Five, really confident. So we see, you know, before the, the effect of the course before it's, before it's given to the student and after. So we can measure that, you know, growth and, you know, long-term attitudes, which is great. And then within the course, there's assessments to um, make sure the students are learning, um, make sure that they are covering the standards that are, you know, assigned by the Common Core and Iowa, the Iowa Core. And um, it's really nice for teachers to uh, hold the students accountable through that process. Okay. So you said earlier that it was free. So is it like really free or is it like parts of it are free or how yeah. free is it really? Yeah, question we get every day. So it's it's free free. There's no catch 22 here. Um, you know, kind of from the air, airplane level view, um, Iowa College Aid and members of the Iowa Bankers Association have provided the funds to give it to to allow schools to access these courses at no cost, um, which is huge because um, we know school districts are strapped for cash. Um, there's a lot of needs out there. Um, and I think adding something on top of that would be a hard thing for us to go into schools and ask for. Um, so what our co-founders have decided is that we're gonna go after this third party payer system where we have private and statewide sponsors that come in and um, kind of ease the burden on schools and provide them this excellent, these excellent resources at no cost. All right, so you mentioned uh, earlier um, how many students mm -hmm. are just this year. It sounds like there's even more that have added on this spring as we're going along. Yeah. So um, when students complete um, and they get their, their badge, what kinds of information does a teacher get about how their students did? Yeah, so the financial literacy course is the best example. So the teacher will receive how the student has done um, in each of the nine different objectives. And those nine objectives cover 153 Iowa core state standards for the 21st century um, category. And so, you know, as you see on the screen here, we had over 10,000 students have accessed the course of last school year, 7,000 of them finished um, and became financially certified. Uh, through the EverFi course. So that is kind of the information the school district and the teacher receives, which is helpful in terms of, you know, planning out curriculum, you know, temperature checks throughout the year, what are they getting, what do they need more help in, and, um, you know, just filling any voids in terms of assessment that schools might need. Okay. Um, it looks like that there has been a lot of uh, growth in this product over time here as well. Yeah, so I and Rob are doing a great job just kind of adapting as we're going through this, which is awesome. But um, so the the state of Iowa really parallels the growth of EverFi as a company in the last three years. So you see in 2010, we're just still getting our sea legs in terms of, you know, what, what are we going to be? How are we going to, you know, fly this plane as we're building it? And then the last couple of years, we've seen ex exponential growth in um, both in terms of certified students and just the active school. So our goal is always the student, right? So we want the most students using our courses as possible to kind of avoid those things. You know, we see 20% of women on college campuses have been sexually assaulted. You know, one in five students in Iowa of the high school level have engaged in binge drinking. 57% of students um, have been cyberbullied in the last month. Numbers like that um, are really scary. And, and so, you know, EverFi is increasingly 
um, growing in effectiveness, addressing those those really scary numbers. All right. So you also have some information here in terms of what people, what kids understand as results in some of the topics. Um, talk a little bit more about um, this financial literacy module. It seems to be one of your more popular ones that people access. Yeah, and I think we'll go into it the video in a second. But um, what it is is a six to eight hour learning course that's web based. Um, it goes through, like I said before, 153 Iowa core state standards, and the topics we organize this information is are pretty bread and butter financial literacy topics. You know, renting versus owning, paying for higher education, credit scores, payment types. And so for the teachers out there teaching this or the econ teacher, they're like, oh, you know, we've covered these topics already and that's great. And so this product is meant to serve as a supplemental resource. It's not meant in any ways as a silver bullet or replacing a teacher or anything like that. It's just another tool um, in the teacher's toolbox to um, go after these topics. So what's available? Yeah. So, so what's, what what courses are out there for um, schools to use? Yeah. So schools um, schools can use any of these nine different courses um, out there. They're available. Um, Iowa College Aid, the Iowa Bankers Association have provided the funds for the financial literacy courses. So definitely those courses have to be used first before we even um, entertain some of our newer courses um, until we find sponsorship for those courses as well. So you know, maybe in 20 years, we'll see this fall out a little bit more, but these five vertices is kind of where where we see our niche as, as a company and where we see a great need. So, you know, intro to STEM, STEM readiness, you know, health and wellness, all these critical skills um, are areas we specialize in. And then throughout all the courses, you know, the, the same thing, digital badging, making sure the kids are engaged, and then data analysis producing, you know, results and quantifiable reasons why these courses work. So teachers can access all of these now. They're available they're now. They're available. Okay. Um, yep, they're available. Okay. So there's the financial literacy. That's the one that you've uh, mainly shown, and you said you've got a video for that. So yes. why don't we talk through that? Okay, so Lincoln, tell us about financial literacy. Yeah, so teacher and student are going to go to our website for a single sign-in. Um, the courses available will show up. Once the student selects the course that they're going to do, in this case financial literacy, they'll have um, access to all the different modules. Um, each of the modules are laid out more or less the same with the pre-assessment, content, conclusion, and post-assessment. The learning is narrated by three different um, people. There's two of them articulate, you know, well-dressed, very financially literate. And then the third person that you're about to see on your screen is Rufus. And Rufus, the, his wrinkled shirt and, um, you know, his uh, common misbehaviors are, are what students are supposed to be engaged to. So Rufus is super sarcastic and students are going to like him or love him, but their goal is to pay attention to him. Um, so as students are gaining access to new information, um, this example, the New York Stock Exchange, they are, inter are in interactive 3D, 3D environments. Um, searching for new terms. So whether that be, you know, 401k, investments, stocks, in a commercial banking situation, your income um, or account numbers, the students are actively engaged, not just sitting there passively, but are, you know, locked in. So in our pre-assessment um, is used to kind of get a, you know, temperature gauge of where the student is at. So it's a five question assessment because we know some students in your classroom are, you know, their moms are the CEO mm -hmm. of the bank and other students in the classroom have never been in a bank and we want to try to account for that. Um, for, some of the, for some of the terms, we have many visual anchors and audio that go with the term. So, you know, credit scores, mortgages, fixed rate, adjustable rate, some of these out there ideas that are, are in banking, we try to connect that to something the student knows already, whether it be a picture or audio that can help them make that leap into more of two small steps. So once the students learn something new, um, in this case, the investment module, um, they're asked to do something with it. So the feedback the students are getting as they're creating a risk portfolio fluctuates. In this example, they're filling out Rufus's 1020 or 1099 easy form um, with his W-2. Most kids are surprised about how much tax is coming on Rufus's income. In this example, classic Rufus is has screwed up his budget once again, spent too much, and so the students are asked to take his receipts and categorize them into income and expenses. Um, over the last month to try to give him um, a little bit more structure in his spending habits.
as Rob and I talked about before, digital badging is something we feature in all of our courses. And that allows students to know as they're going through the course that, yeah, they're doing a great job, they're making progress, and the ultimate certification is being financially literate where the teacher can actually print off a certificate, give to the student, give to an award ceremony. Um, as a former teacher myself, this is my favorite part of the course is the post assessment to actually know um, if the students learn something. So the students have to get 70% or above on the assessment um, to move on to the next module. If they don't, they're pushed into a review session um, and allowed to take the quiz again. So we don't give up on students by any means. Um, we just ask them to master the content that we teach them. So this is a nice feature of the course itself too. It's called the EverFi Life Game where it's kind of looking similar to a digital environment where students can create an avatar, you know, change the mohawk color or whatnot, and then <clears throat> they get an objective. Um, they're pushed into um, a 3D interactive environment. Um, in this case, it's a high school environment. Sam here has gotten a first part-time job, so he has to figure out what he has to do before his first day of work. You know, how many deductions is he going to take? Um, you know, what is his budget going to look like? You know, can you go to prom? Things like that. So we try to make it as realistic and engaging as possible. And there's no assessment here, but in the top, the feedback is at the top of the score. So the higher the score, the more financially literate um, and responsible the student is behaving. If your student is showing, you know, mastering the basic high school level, by all means, um, put them into the college or post-college level where the student has more access to credit, a larger budget and literally the world is bigger um, just like in real life um, and all through this on the bottom they're seeing feedback from um, virtual friends kind of um, what we call mooter and then the available funds to give them feedback to make sure that they're living within their means and asking them to be critical thinker thinkers in terms of financial literacy so that is the everfi financial literacy course in a nutshell you have any questions so there's actual content and then there's a way for them to actually apply it as well so mm -hmm. it's not just learning facts but then there's the application and the gaming part of that as well yeah and some teachers the game part of the everfi life game teachers use it as a maybe a activity at the end of the period if someone finishes early mm -hmm. some use it as an incentive if um, you know the kids doing well if it's really you know motivating to the students some use the everfi life game as kind of an intro to a new unit if they're doing a financial literacy unit um, yeah so it's you know like we said before it's just a resource for teachers and you know teachers are great teachers are uh, passionate and they're creative and this tool just allows them to be those things all right so that's the uh, the financial literacy program um what is vault so vault is came out of a need that middle school and elementary principals had in terms of teaching financial literacy so vault is kind of what i call the the younger sibling of our high school program so instead of you know very practical things like what is your credit score what is a fafsa report in the high school level um we'll have things more about making financial decisions like what is a need versus a want you know who's a good person to ask for financial advice um, you know, what is savings and investing and why are they valuable to my life as, um, you know, a very young person getting into the financial world. Okay. I also noticed by the screen, it looks like this module takes about two and a half hours typically for kids to finish. Do they have to do that in one block of time? Can you break it up? How yeah. might you do that? Great question. I didn't even register that. So whatever time we say the course takes whether it be two hours for this course, for example, eight hours for the high school financial literacy. Those are broken down to about 35 to 45 minute segments. So kind of a traditional class period, we try to fit it into one of those. So it's two and a half hours total of seed time. Um, that can be broken up into you know five or six days. And those five or six days don't have to be back to back to back. They can be you know every Friday for two months. Mm -hmm. um, or in some cases, you know this has been assigned as homework. Um, in a situation like that, or in a computer lab, or a study hall. Um, so it's really up to the school to decide how they want to implement the course. And it's modular, so I'm assuming that you could do like credit and borrowing when you're talking about that, or that's part of a unit that you're talking with, and you don't have to do it all at in a two-week period or something like that. Yeah, you can spread totally, it out. Totally, because some teachers, um, like me, for example, when I used it in my classroom, I would teach the unit, let's just say I'm paying for higher education, and then we would use the EverFi module on higher education as a assessment piece. Some teachers have used it very successfully, using it as kind of an intro to new material to kind of get um, a ground level, 
knowledge base that all the students know before they jump into maybe a project or um, traditional lecture style um, lessons regarding that topic. Okay. So Ignition, um, we'll kind of just jump through some of our courses here. Ignition is about being digitally literate and responsible. So it deals with some of those um, those huge issues that are middle schools and you know growingly elementary schools are dealing with in terms of internet, cyberbullying, being safe on social media, keeping your um, privacy safe, um, what information can you give out, what can't you, and some very basic things that sometimes are overlooked, like parts of a computer, um, how the internet operates, and kind of like what the digital world actually is. Radius um, is our intro, what we call intro to STEM, our STEM readiness course, and it deals with um, Applied math and basic HTML coding, um, which is you know a, the number one skill sought after by um, employers in the next you know ten years, projected in the next ten years, um, which is exciting. And this course is a little, little larger lift; it's about ten hours long, and it's just great. I mean, it's very. I think it's an extremely attractive game as you're playing it. Like I was very engaged and. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of help that goes along with it. So a teacher doesn't need to have a background in computer programming to teach this because um, our our product team has done a great job having help screens pop up if students get stuck or um, just really simple, straightforward directions um, as the students are going through different missions in this. And at the same time, um, besides the content, students are being exposed to different careers in STEM. They're, you know, what some people would consider non-traditional careers in STEM, not just an engineer, but um, some other things that are um, attainable with a two-year degree or you know an untraditional background education. So STEM's not just for engineering anymore. It's not. Yeah. 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 Newsflash. So alcohol edu. This was originally um, a college thing. So a lot of colleges will have their freshmen go through our alcohol EDU for high school before orientation. High school principals heard about it and asked Everify to produce a course that was appropriate for high school level, um, but dealing with those same issues of you know myths versus facts and alcohol. Um, what is blood alcohol concentration? What does it do to a brain's development? Um, so we're educating students um, on what alcohol does to their body. And so the next time they go, they're in a situation where they might be drinking, um, they can make a more educated choice. So um, what's really cool about this course is that we have a pre-survey, the students go through the three hour course, and then they are forced to wait 30 days before they take the post-survey. So in that interim time, they're meant to kind of experience life and then reflect on that um, at the post-survey to see you know, the gains in um, you know, kind of the choices they're making and the processes they're going through. So this could be something health teachers could embed in their curriculum or PE teachers or... Yeah, health, I mean, anyone with science. access to the internet, yeah. really. I mean, it's not limited to anyone. Um, you know, in, in the states, we've seen this used widespread, mostly as gym teachers, health teachers. Um, but I know I've had health, or excuse me, guidance counselors ask me about it or... Um, you know, transitional situations are um, alternative schools have asked me about it just to, so they know what's going on in their school because, you know, the data we're collecting on your students um, is very honest because we know high schoolers are very honest, one of their many great attributes. And um, we ask them, like, you know, how much, how frequently are you drinking? What are the certain environments you're in when you're drinking? Um, and very straightforward um, questions get straightforward answers, um, which is what we want. Okay. So Commons is um, based off of Sandra Day O'Connor's iCivics. And so what they have, if you're a social studies teacher, you're probably familiar with this already, um, but what they have is a series of games that deal with social studies concepts like federal versus state rights, how the electoral college works. And um, around those great games, we have built seven different modules that deal with topics usually seen in American history or government class. And what's great about this course, in my opinion, as a former social studies teacher, is that it's addressing um, Iowa core standards in terms of reading informational texts, which are really tough to read. Like The Bill of Rights is a very tough document to read, and I think Common does a great job of breaking it down, having students really get the gist of, of what the Bill of Rights is. And on top of that, at the end of the modules, students are asked to write an op-ed that you can submit to your local newspaper. Okay. So how do people go about getting started? What do they do? 
Yeah, so an ambitious person can take what they see on the screen right now and get started on the financial literacy course tomorrow. Um, if there's any questions, my, my information's at the bottom. I highly recommend you contact me because part of my job is not just to let teachers know about what the courses are and how to use them, but also teacher support. So, you know, questions like what internet browser should I be using? Um, you know, can we use it here? What standards does it cover? Do you have a teacher guide? All those questions are, are you know, what keeps me employed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we have all those things at EverFi and, and I'm more than happy to give them out to teachers, but they have to ask. I can't, I can't read minds. So please uh, give me contact or a call at the contact information at the bottom and uh, we'll get you set up and get you some um, blended learning resources. Um, they're, they're pretty good. And they can always contact us here at info at AEAPD online and we'll forward on the message to you so that you can get the information out to people. Absolutely. And we're, you know, we have um, me here in Des Moines and then my counterpart Mimi in Waterloo. So we'll have someone more than likely come out to your school, train you in person um, to make this relationship uh, authentic and local. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.